Hi guys, this is our Carolina Varsity. We're in our 2015 season, and we're going to take a look at players of the game for Week 16. I'm Dale Ross. And I'm Matt Marta Pittman. And Matt, I'll start it off. Uh, I went to the Monroe East Lincoln game, and it was uh, East Lincoln. Uh, you know, came in without Sage, uh, or excuse me, without uh, Chasserat, and uh, but they still got. Uh, Hammered forty six to six. Wow, that's tough. It was a, it was a tough ball game for them. So uh, the first thing I wanted to do was I, I'm going to shout out the entire uh, Monroe defense. You're the fastest defense I've seen play this year. Man, are you guys fast? And you were so fast that uh, East Lincoln couldn't do anything for you. They even uh, when they were passing, they were even held eight men back to block, and they still couldn't keep you guys out. But I got a few highlights up on the uh, uh, the site that I put up. I got, I think, maybe five of the sacks, something like that, are up on the site. Uh, you guys want to take a look? Uh, they held East Lincoln to uh, minus 13 yards rushing is what I uh, read in the paper, but looking in the stats just mm -hmm. now, uh, it said minus 1.2, I think it was, or something, that it, or may, it might have been 12. So anyway, it was minus yardage rushing. Uh, of course, a lot of that was because there were a lot of sacks and uh, you know the quarterback running and getting dropped. If he wasn't sacked, he was, he was still dropped when he was uh, trying to run the ball. Right. Uh, and the first player that I'm going to say stood out was uh, number 50, Traquan Price. Uh, and I saw from uh, in the paper, or actually I got these stats off of Monroe's uh, official stats. He had eight solo tackles, three assists, uh, three tackles for loss, one sack, two interceptions. He had a nice. real big interception in that uh, momentum shift uh, that occurred at the end of the uh, second uh, quarter, right before half, when uh, Monroe stretched it from a 13 to six ball game and uh, put uh, 17 points on the board, uh, mm -hmm. added 17 more points. Uh, so you played a great ball game, young man. And number 24, DeAndre State, nine tackles, five solo, three tackles for loss, two sacks. Wow. And then number 21, Maquel Bryant, eight tackles, four so, uh, solo tackles, mm -hmm. four tackles for loss, three sacks. Crazy. So those three guys just dominated that uh, line of scrimmage. They were, they were everywhere. There were two more sacks in the ball game. Uh, actually, one more because that, that, that totaled six, seven sacks in the ball game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Zephaniah Wall, I wanted to – you know, throw him out. He's been on here before. His stats aren't outstanding. 14 to 27, 295, three TDs, but they were really good. He's a good looking ball player to watch him in person. He's a he's a very, very good ball player. Athletic, fast, has good vision. So when he had to run, uh, he was he was as good at that as he was uh, throwing the ball. And he throws a nice ball. Uh, and then Jadarius McManus, he caught, um, he had eight receptions for 183 yards, two TDs. He also played defense. He had a solo tackle and he had one assist and he had 60 yards in return. So he really had a great ball game. Some might say he'd been the, the overall player of the game, but I just thought the defensive players, they're the ones who won this ball game. And I really couldn't find any, uh, in watching the game, I really didn't see any players that uh, stood out uh, for East Lincoln. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I, it was a tough night for you. Uh, you had a great run, and I'm oh, sure, yeah. I'm oh, sure yeah. you guys will be back next year. Congrats to both teams. Monroe, hope you guys go win it all next week. You represent for uh, part of Charlotte, Charlotte area, too. That's right. Um, obviously, the Mallard Creek East Forsyth game was an instant classic uh, pulled out by Mallard Creek in overtime. Mm -hmm. Several players stood out in that game, uh, notably James Smith, Mallard Creek quarterback. I'll tell you how, how many times we said his name in the past three years. Over the last, especially <laughs> last year and a good bit this year, yeah. 
Um, he had 354 yards of total offense, threw for 202 yards and a touchdown, ran for a game high, 152 yards, three touchdowns. He hit that big pass to Bowman down the middle, obviously, mm-hmm. to help put the game into overtime. And then in the overtime, they ran the option, which they always seem to pull out. <laughs> the right. most critical situations yeah. ran the same thing against Vance and over time they went to it again and they scored again on it uh, to win it um, Chancery Bowman um, ran for 129 yards and caught four passes for 65 yards and those two plays were real big that he came up with um, that I just mentioned um, so great job to both of those guys um, in a losing effort uh, Mike Martin East Forsyth um, he had a heck of a game uh, nine catches for 118 yards and a touchdown. Also had a 95-yard kickoff return. Uh, just a dynamic player when they got him in space uh, or one-on-one situations. He was making plays mm-hmm. all over the field on offense. I um, also want to shout out the East uh, Forsyth quarterback, Noah Smith, threw for 196 yards and two touchdowns. Um, they ran that check with me offense at the line. That That's not easy to run when you're checking at the line, getting a call from the coaches, and then relaying it out um, yeah, almost every play. So, you know, that that's a heck of a job for uh, Noah Smith to get that done. And I know you got a couple others. Yeah, we got a couple more nominations uh, that came in off the site. Uh, Josh Brown, uh, he's been here many times, linebacker. He had uh, – 12 tackles, one sack, and uh, four hurries. That, those are estimated numbers because Nile Creek doesn't publish numbers. Uh, and then we got a, a lineman here, Isaac Hampton, number 56. Uh, D lineman and offensive line. And uh, since he's, uh, and I think we had him last week, didn't we? Uh, we had Was Grant it? Gibson. That's right. Last Grant week. Gibson, that's right. Uh, so, Bear says that uh, since they've uh, they've he's gone up, uh, you know, both went b- both ways the whole game, mm-hmm. and since they've moved him over, uh, their yards per game he's gener- they've generated over three hundred yards. So he's saying they've generated about forty more yards per game by moving some of these guys over from uh, defensive line and putting them on the offensive line. Uh, he thinks he was a big part uh, uh, in the team, and of course he held uh, on defense. He was a big part in holding them to 106 yards of rushing on 25 carries. So, uh, great job, Mr. Hampton. Love those yes. two-way linemen, man. Keep giving us those lineman nominations. We need more. Exactly. <laughs> We're reaching the end of our season. If we don't get them in the um, playoffs here, remember us next year. Catholic versus Dudley. Catholic pulled that one out 17 to 8. Um, Coach Brodowitz was very, very impressed with his defense. <laughs> Remember the post game interview, he was coming out and saying that everyone was, you know, hyping up the Dudley defense and that, you know, the Catholic defense really got off on that and they went out and proved they were one of the best, if not the best, defense in the state. Right. Um, of course, Jared Anderson on the offensive side of the ball, uh, 22, t- uh, 22 rushes for 134 yards and a touchdown. Also had a big 63-yard run to put his team in the red zone to set up that um, clinching uh, touchdown they had on that final drive there. And speaking of the defense, uh, a nomination, and boy, the numbers were really good. The numbers that were given to me by Derek Miller were Looked good, but then I went and got official stats, and they were actually uh, a little bit better. Oh. Uh, Grayson Crone had 11 solo tackles, good and gracious. he had 14 tackles overall. One of the things I've looked at at Catholic, and it mentioned this in the game, is about how many solo tackles uh, those guys get. But uh, uh, he had, uh, and of course, one tackle for loss. Derek says he had an interception, but Derek, I looked uh, officially, they did not record any uh, recorded interception for him. So. Uh, Either way, that's a heck of a game. Oh, that's a phenomenal game. Exactly. 11 solo tackles. That's 14 tackles in a game. That big. That's that's, that's phenomenal. That's awesome. So let's take a look at a few more guys here and some other big games around the area. Uh, Community School of Davidson, Holden Rizzo. He was here last week. Eight catches, 139 yards, and three touchdowns, but they lost 30 to 27 to Robbinsville up in Mm -hmm. uh, North Met. Also for Community School of Davidson was Joey Bernardini, who's been here before. 
uh, 22 carries, 147 yards, and a touchdown in that same game. So that's a heck of an effort. Community School of Davidson was going was vying to be the first charter school to make a state final. Right. And for them to make it all the way to this point and just come up a little short, that that's an awesome season for those guys up there. And um, you know, very impressed with you guys' effort and talent. Yeah, playing the defending state champions. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another game, Greensboro Page versus Middle Creek up in the Raleigh Apex area. Um, a couple guys from Page and a very impressive victory they had. Uh, Javon Lee, mm -hmm. uh, second week in a row he's here. Uh, junior running back, 188 yards and five touchdowns. And they beat Middle Creek 49-23. to That game was on the road in a hostile environment. They went in there and just yep. beat the crap out of them. <laughs> <laughs> and also... Another kid that looked real good, DeAndre Overton. Um, three interceptions in the game. Also went around, played offense, had six catches for 77 yards in that victory. So Greensboro Page hooking up with Mallet Creek. We're going to get to it here in a minute. Yep. Um, I think it's going to be a heck of a game. And Greensboro Page looks like a really, really good team. Um, Crest on Concord, a couple guys for Crest in that game. Uh, Trey Harbison running back, 20 carries, 169 yards, and two touchdowns. They beat Concord in Concord, 44 to six in the yeah, game. That yeah. was not close at all. Uh, Willie Green for Crest, Crest quarterback, 10 to 16 passing, 235 yards, and three touchdowns in that same victory. And Crest doing what they do, uh, going and playing state title games. All right. <laughs> Something about Cleveland County. They've man. been they've been there many times. <laughs> yep, right. and them and their partner Shelby. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, another perennial power, South Point. Ryland Etherton, big fullback, uh, 175 yards and four touchdowns on 28 carries, and their playoff victory over Kings Mountain that sends them to the state title game, 29 to seven. So that red bone offense, that big fullback coming through there, you can't stop him. Friday night, you'll be able to see him uh, again. Looking forward to it. You mentioned Shelby, Cleveland County. Man, this guy. Xavier Brooks, Shelby running back, sophomore. 26 carries, 286 yards, and two touchdowns. Good gracious, that's over 10 yards a carry. <laughs> <laughs> He also had added a receiving touchdown, and they won over Lincolnton, thirty-seven to twenty-one. It's a big game. Not to be, you know, not mentioned in a losing effort. Um, this guy was here a couple of weeks in a row. Tyrus Dameron for Lincolnton, uh, twenty-eight carries himself for two hundred fifty-six yards and two touchdowns in that same game. So, you know, some guys really stepping up in these big games. Yep. Um, congratulations to all the winners. Um, you know, like we said, we're still taking nominations. If you feel like someone didn't get recognized, shout us out. Let us know. You guys know. If you're watching the video, you know how to reach us. That's right. <laughs> exactly. You know how. Tweet us. Come to the site and let us know. All right. Thanks. And uh, we'll have another one next week.